I think we've been absolutely tremendous. Um, I think um, our consistency has been excellent. I think the style of play and the way the players are approaching the games and winning the games with a, a certain style of play has delighted me. I thought the performance on Saturday against Aberdeen was one of our best of the season. Under the circumstances, it was our third game in six days. We had almost 30 attempts at goal against a team who were third in the table and were really up for the game. So I can't criticise any facet of the game. You know, at this stage, they're playing brilliantly and they've got the bit between the teeth. If someone had, had given you this scenario at the start of the season, is this exactly where you'd like to be? Well, yeah, I mean, we are, what, 10 wins in a row? I mean, that's very, very good, you know, and um, I know people look to for weaknesses and people look for negatives, but, you know, as a manager, you're always on guard for that sort of thing, but the way they're playing at the minute and um, their mindset, at this stage of the season, with a heavy December, you know, they're giving me everything. When teams play Celtic, they do raise their game. Mm -hmm. How hard is it to keep everyone so mentally focused because all the pressure is always on Celtic? Yeah, but you can sort of divert that pressure if, if you want. You know, you, you can take that away from the players and just tell them to, you know, first of all, take each game as it comes, you know, so don't look too far ahead, stay in the present. We know that at the end of this month they're going to get a break. I think that's something that they look forward to, but they've got to. You know, focus now on the next four or five days, which is very important. Um, I'm not really listening to the outside noise, just look to improve. I think the team can get better. You know, I think there's more to come from them. They're still young. You know, a lot of them, you know, your Ayers, your Fringpongs, you know, your Mikey Johnsons, they're all sort of teens or early 20s. I like that. We've got some really talented players on top of that here consistently. You know, I think underrated by some. I think you know what we've done in Europe this season has been spectacular, and what we've done domestically has been, you know, almost perfect. You say you take each game as it comes. Obviously, it's St Mirren first up on Boxing Day, but will there be half an eye on the game against Rangers because it is such a big game? It's a big game, but so St Mirren, you know, and if you come off it at all, then you know you open yourself up to criticism or you put yourself under massive pressure for the next game. So. You know, St Mirren's are so focused. Obviously, we we as a backroom staff will do work on, you know, the Rangers game coming up at the end of the month. But we can't bring that to the players at the minute. You've got to fo fully focus on getting a result at St Mirren. Neil, you've been at the start of the season. You brought in a lot of new faces that have become important players. You've talked about tweaking the style slightly. Given all that, has the team actually exceeded your expectations with what they've done? Like? Possibly, possibly. Um, you know, the amount of goals we've scored and um, the accumulation of the points so far and, like I said, our European campaign, that definitely exceeded my expectations in terms of we, we, we qualified with two games to go and we won the group, you know, with a game to go. And the consistency, we've already won a trophy, um, which is brilliant. But obviously the priority is the championship and we are making really good strides in that aspect. So I'm absolutely delighted. I'm really proud of them as well with the way they, they handle themselves on and off the field. With the January window coming up, people will be wondering about your moves and that, but it's actually a little bit trickier when the team is going so well to kind of identify the areas for improvement. Yeah, but we, we know what areas that we can improve on. So, yeah, again, we're working away in the background on that. Um, but, you know, we have a recruitment team and, you know, Nick as head of that, so... The, they're taking all that pressure and weight away from me. And then I'll have packages to look at, you know, in between the games to sort of push the button really. In terms of your selection for St Mirren, how do you balance it in terms of resting some players for a short turnaround for the Rangers game, but also want to keep that momentum going? Look, we've had uh, seven games so far this month, and I think we've maybe changed the team, you know, once or twice, you know, in terms of personnel, you know, one player in or two players in, you know. So I don't think that's going to change now between now and the end of the month. So I don't think I think they're in a good place physically. You know, obviously mentally they're playing with a lot of confidence. So I don't really see major changes for the game on Boxing Day or for the game against 
Rangers at the end of the month. Is that important when you're playing so well just to not overcomplicate things and just tell us players to go out and express themselves that they have done? Yeah, I mean, in an ideal world, you'd like to go bang, oh, we'll change five here. I mean, we did the whole change really for the Cluj game, you know, because that was one we felt was a, a luxury we could afford to do and give the players, you know, maybe that miss out on the travelling and certainly miss out on the game. So we've used that and then the rest of the time we, um, we've gone with basically 14 or 15 who are playing very, very well and it's difficult for the rest to break into that when they are playing so well. What have you made of St Mirren and Jim Goodwin? Well, when we played them at Satellite Park, we beat them 2-0 but it was a difficult game. You know, Jim had them, you know, defensively and, and in midfield, really good shape, you know, tactically, defensively set up very well. And this is the type of game that, you know, you could fall on your sword if you're not careful. Um, they've been sort of scratching away, you know, getting results here and there, picking up a win or the odd win or a point. So he knew it was always going to be a difficult season for them, but I think they're a lot better off this season than they were last year. Derek McInnes said after the Aberdeen game that he'd spoken to you about Sam Cosgrove's challenge and he said that you thought it was a, a harsh decision. I know they've the appealed at the hearings today. What, what were your thoughts on, on the challenge at the time? Uh, unnecessary, but um, you know he did get a lot of the ball. But you know there's intent there. I didn't think he needed to make the challenge in that area and and the way he did it. Ten years ago, you'd have gone. I'd have been happy with a challenge like that. But the way the game is now, on the follow through, you know it could have hurt Christopher. You know, and Christopher's maybe lucky that he he didn't come off with a bad injury or a, an injury of some sort. So it was full-blooded, and I, th I just felt it, looking at it at the time, it was a full-blooded challenge, but when you see it again, you're thinking, why are you making that challenge like that? You know, you're setting yourself up for, for trouble. Um, so, in hindsight, with the way the game is now, it probably was the correct decision. When you see someone going in at that speed, do you feel for your player safety a wee bit? Of course, especially when you've got a leg dangling out there, you know, the one leg. Um, and you always worry when a player has left the ground that the excessive force could be, you know, dangerous. Report this morning, uh, Neil, about Spora, so I think in talks with mm -hmm. How far is, how I, fast is that? I don't know. Um, there was talks, I believe, yesterday, but he's, like I said, <coughs> excuse me, he's one of a number of options that we are talking to at the moment. So there's no further progress on that one. Plans for Christmas Day? Training. As a, you bah obviously humbug. <laughs> <laughs> you've obviously been through it's rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you've been through festive periods as a, as a player. How does it differ as a manager going through it? I, I used to love playing, you know, Christmas time. Um, just that, you know, time of year. Sometimes you, you wish you had a wee break here and there, but um, it just uh, there's a nice atmosphere around it, you know, people are smiling going to the games and it's an important facet of the season. As a manager, um, like everything else, when you become managing, it's a lot more difficult, you know, because you're looking after 25 players rather than just the one when you played. Um, so you're just hoping that um, they look after themselves and have a nice Christmas day. They'll be in in the morning. And then we'll give them the afternoon, the evening with their families, which I think is very important. We have players here from around the world, and it's you know an important time of the season. From a football point of view, from a personal point of view, it's important that you know they have their loved ones around them as well. And then you have the opportunity to go and show them how well you're doing and how well you're developed, and how you make them so proud of them. Like you know, so it's I like it. I'll be looking forward to the break as well when it comes because we've had. Nine games, we're only four in November, but nine this month, so it's been quite concertina. And it's a big ask sometimes for the players, physically and mentally, but they know at the end they've got a break to look forward to and some more weather training as well. It's astonishing to think that it's a running game and that's halfway through the league season. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it feels longer. I mean, I think somebody was telling me the Hearts game was Celtic 60th of 2019, so. Um, but that's what you get when you're, you know, in all the competitions and you know, competing in all the competitions and trying to win all the competitions, and probably wouldn't have it any other way, really.
you'd probably have settled out, I imagine, if you'd been told halfway mark and you're only conceding five points, they're drawing a, a loss, that's all you Yeah, I think it's terrific. You know, when you think of the loss, we were down to 10 men for 70 minutes, you know, so, and the rest of the games we've won. Yeah, I mean, again, they've won the League Cup, they've won the Europa Group. Yeah, they're a very, very good group of players in a good place at the minute. Now, I know it can change very quickly. You know, you know you're know, only one result and one performance away from a, a crisis, as it were, but we ignore all that, you know, and we look at the performance and we look at the body language of the players, and at the minute it's very good. And like I said at the start of the interview, I was so pleased with the performance and the level of performance on, on Saturday. I thought we deserved a lot more from the game. Some of the combination players and the speed and the speed of the passing and the quality chances we created. We could have been three up after ten minutes, you know, they started the game so well. And against a very good side, so their levels are very good at the minute. Um no it's as you were really, I think. Um El Hamed's not a million miles away, but it just may be too soon for him before the break. Um, Maggie, obviously, he's had a few niggles here and there, but we're hoping he's over all that now. Um, Elian Usi won't be fit, so it's basically as you were. Is there a timescale on Elian Usi at all? Well, it'll probably be January now, you know. Uh, I don't think he'll be, really won't be fit for the Rangers game because he's still feeling it a little bit and he hasn't done any work really, so we'll just have to leave that one for now. Okay. Merry Christmas, Dave. Have a nice one when it comes.